Right, guys, let's kick this off. Uh, first of all, welcome to everybody. Uh, and good morning or good afternoon, depending on where in the world you guys are. Um, and, um, and, and today we're going to be learning a little bit about our smart search features as part of our Cathexis knowledge sessions. So my name is Gus Brecker. And um, I'm the Global Business Development Manager for Cathexis Technologies. Joining me today are Mr. Daryl Berman, who's our, my co-host, and Mr. Dean Alkema. If you guys can just turn your video on for a while so that just people can see who you are. <clears throat> so Daryl and Dean will be here to help answer questions towards the end of the, the webinar. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we'll present the webinar. It's going to be about 40 minutes or so. After it's, we'll be answering questions. During the webinar, you guys will all be muted and all that, but you can ask questions throughout the webinar um, via the Q&A chat session. And then we'll, we'll try and answer all your questions at the end. If we don't manage to get to all of them, depending on how many there are, don't worry, we'll get back to you um, afterwards so that we can uh, answer your questions via email or something like that. So I think firstly, what I'd like to do is um, just Give you an idea for people who don't know who Cathexis is. Quick one minute. So we're one of the world leaders in video management solutions. And we're talking about uh, as a VMS manufacturer. Uh, we've got about 25 years experience in the market. And our product is sold in 53 different countries. So you'll find us in most places. Um, if you look to the right of that screen on the top right, you see we were the Benchmark Innovation Awards winner 2020 in the video management software category. So we're very proud of that because for those of you who don't know Benchmark Magazine, they are an independent bureau that does assessment of video management products for the industry. And our competitors were all of the major players. So we're very proud of that fact. And in fact, we won it in 2018 as well. So we're very proud of the fact that we are innovative and that we innovate product that can be used. So just quickly about this webinar, what we're going to be covering. Uh, first of all, we're going to look at our search tools. We're going to do a little bit of an overview and then a demonstration. Um, and then we're going to enter into the summary and the Q&A. So I think, first of all, we want to just want to cover is what is our objective in pr providing search tools for, for the marketplace? Well, I think the main thing is to improve the effectiveness and the efficiency of your operation. So we want to try and make the lives of the operators easier um, in the, from a control room environment. And at the end of the day, the ultimate objective is to increase the return on your investment. So the more effective that you are, the more efficient you are in achieving the effectiveness that you acquire, the better your return on investment is going to be. And that's what our sole purpose in our development is, is to try and achieve that. So looking at the content, we're going to cover our video review interface. So that's pretty much just how you navigate through the review uh, section of our video. I'm going to go into our snap search, then our motion search, our activity trails, our object classification search, which uh, is uh, classifying objects using deep learning and neural networks, and then our metadata base uh, searching for specific transactions with our integrations, and then our alarm gateway. <clears throat> now, I'm going to apologize in advance now because I'll probably go into quite a lot of technical detail. I don't believe that we will be able to demonstrate the power of the product without going into quite a lot of technical detail and uh, showing the, all the features of the particular items that are displayed on your screen now. So without further ado, I'm going to go and show you our video review interface, which is really just how do you find video? How do you go backwards, forwards? How do you archive or export video, etc.? So if I look at our, our standard user interface, on the left-hand side, you've got your navigation, um, which will basically uh, allow you to re play backwards and forwards and go to the place that you want. And I'll expand a bit on that shortly. At the bottom, you've got your timeline, which is the time at which you're looking at the video. Then you've got your motion levels. So the motion levels show the level of motion at any particular time on the timeline. 
Then if you look at your navigation tool, you've got your standard play forward, play reverse, step, go to beginning, go to end controls. And then we've got our quick time scrolls, <clears throat> which is, um, allows you to very quickly go forward and backwards in the video. So if you want to go back one second, you click on the down arrow in the seconds column. You want to go down a minute, you, you just click on the arrow and the same as with hours and with days. And then you can also go to your standard times. You've got an instant rewind button, which is used in a lot of industries where they want to immediately play backwards or go back 10 seconds or five seconds. Uh, and we introduced that initially for the casino industry where they're looking at sleight of hand. Uh, you can change the speed of playback. You can bookmark wherever you're looking at at any one time, any point in time. Uh, you've got your tag button. So you've got your start and end tag buttons if you're selecting a video clip. And then you can loop the selected player. So whatever you selected, you can loop uh, by using that loop button. And then, of course, your export button. We call it archiving. Some of our competitors call it exporting. But the bottom line is what it means is that you selected a video clip and you now want to save that onto a media device of some sort, whether it be a hard drive or a, a USB stick or something like that. And then to go back live, you just click on the live button. If you look at our user interface on the left-hand side of all our resources, an our user interface will allow you to choose which side you want it, whether you want it on the left or the right. So that's just a quick overview of that. Now I'm just going to quickly show you a video of that working. So in the center, obviously, we've got our camera panel. And then on the left-hand side, we've got our resource panel, which contains the cameras, the inputs and outputs, any audio devices. And on the bottom left, <clears throat> you can see our navigation panel. And then in the user interface, I can, I can drag cameras into the user interface. I can change layouts by uh, making a layout bigger or smaller, whatever I might want to do. But for the purpose of this um, webinar, what we're going to do is we're going to go into review mode. I'm going to choose a camera. And now I want to go backwards. So immediately I can go to the navigation. And if I want to go back one second, all I do is I click the down arrow and it goes back one second. And I can scroll. That is how quick it is to immediately go back. And what is really nice with our interface, and you can do the same with hours and with, with minutes and with days. What is nice with our user interface, you can do it in the same window. You don't have to open a separate window. And then I can go and choose a specific day. So I'm choosing Monday and it goes back to Monday. That's how simple it is. So I'm just gonna go back now to the original day and time. Right now, if I wanna jump back 10 seconds, I can go and just click on that arrow and I can choose what I want that button to do. So I'm just gonna click on it and you'll see the video will go back five seconds. Now, bear in mind, this is connecting remotely from my house to the site. And obviously I can change the speed. And then I can step backwards. So this is stepping backwards frame by frame. And we're obviously talking about keyframes here in the HD64 or HD65 environment. And I can play it backwards immediately. This is one of the few products I've seen that can immediately play backwards. And on the bottom here, we've got our timeline. And you can take your mouse and drag on the timeline. And each one of those red towers is the motion. And if you hover over that, you'll see thumbnails of the video at that particular time. I can zoom in and out of that timeline just by using my scroll wheel. What I'm gonna do now is to show you how to select an area to archive. So I'm gonna tag on that area, I tag the beginning, scroll to the right, tag the end, and you'll see an area that's been selected. Now I can play that back in a loop or else I can select it for archiving. 
So this is our archive um, uh, window. And you can see in the archive window, I can now choose a particular folder to archive to. I can give it a password, which means that you, in order to play this video footage, you have to be into that password. I can make this archive exportable. So if you want to export into MP4 format, and I can copy the archive viewer to the media source, uh, the, the, the media that you want to um, save the video to. I can also give it a watermark profile, which will allow you to identify from where the video came. And then I can give obviously that a description. Right, so that's pretty much what we call archiving or exporting. Now you can see that the video is now playing a loop of the selected video. So when it comes to the end of that time, it'll go back to the beginning. And that is pretty much the, um, the selected time that I've been playing. All right, so that's pretty much shown you. And then you can obviously you can bookmark uh, at any one time, but I'll show you that a little bit later. Uh, what I'm going to do now is show you how to do this with multiple cameras simultaneously. So all I do is I hold my control button down and I select three cameras. So that's uh, top left, top right, and the bottom left. I start a review group. And now anything I do in my navigation will be done on those three cameras. Obviously, I've just chosen three, but you can choose a whole lot more if you so wish. All right, so I've gone double speed. I'm playing backwards. You'll see the, the truck will, the pickup truck will go backwards through the top left camera, and you'll see it appearing in the top right camera and at the far end of the bottom left camera. Now I'm going to choose a bigger area to, to tag. And now I'm playing forward. So you'll see that vehicle will come back into the the area. So I've now chosen the cameras that I want to export. And I've chosen the time that I want to export it. Now when I go to my archive or my export window, you'll see it's chosen multiple cameras. And I can archive the multiple cameras as such. So let's go and bookmark this. So I'm just giving it a description and you can have as many bookmarks as you like. And what it'll do, it'll save the exact footage, the exact layout that you're looking at. So not only will it uh, bookmark what the, the three cameras, it'll bookmark the live camera that you had displayed at the same time. And there you are, I've just ret retrieved the bookmark and now you can play that bookmark back. So guys, that is a fairly simple overview of the review interface. And as you can see, it's very powerful. And you'll see the navigation tools used throughout the presentation as I run through it. Feel free to ask questions, as I say, by using the Q&A chat. And uh, Daryl and Dean will, uh, the, the two clever guys will answer the questions as we go along. Right, so now what I'm gonna do is go into our, what we call our snap search. So snap search allows you to quickly find when objects appear and disappear. So for example, somebody left a fire escape door open. When was it opened? And you know, who opened it? Uh, or a vehicle was there yesterday, but it's not there today, or an item has been stolen, or something has uh, arrived, and you, you just want to try and find out when it's arrived there. So what we do is we use thumbnails to drill down into the selected period. It uses no additional resources because it's not using an algorithm. And what's really nice about this is that it can be used in very high traffic areas. So if you've got a retail environment where there's lots and lots and lots of people and somebody's taken something out of a trolley, um, 
a normal motion detection algorithm will be, there'll be too much motion for it to really be effective. So what I'll do now, I think to demonstrate this, I'm just gonna show you a quick video. So what I wanna do here, somebody said that just near this door, there was a computer there today. I wanna go and find it. So I tag that as the, the end. And now I'm scrolling back to Thursday and you can see the computers there. So I'm just gonna pause this video. So what I did there, I said, the computer's not there now, go back to when it was there and let's go and run a snap search. Okay, so I enter into snap search. Now what I do, it spits that time up into thumbnails and you can select how many thumbnails you want. So that's 24, I only want to look at nine thumbnails. So what you do now, and let me slow that down. You look for a thumbnail where the computer was there and the thumbnail for where the computer wasn't there. And you take your mouse and you drag between them. So you can see those two, now it's one hour 30. Don't forget we started with five days here guys. That's 11 minutes. That's now one minute 25. And there you can see center right. There's some activity here and you can play from there. And that's how easy that was to find. So I looked over, just to summarize what I did there, I looked over a four day period. I think it was from the, the Monday back to the Thursday. So it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, so five days. And it took me about 20 seconds to find out when that computer was removed from that point. To demonstrate it a bit more, I'm gonna show you another video of a similar thing. So I wanna find out when that vehicle arrived in the car park. So what I do is I tag the end point. I'm gonna go back to about 5.30 in the morning. And you can see the vehicle's not there. So I'm gonna tag that as the beginning point. And that's now about, about seven hours. And I'm gonna run a snap search on that. Once again, I look at the thumbnail where the car was there and when the car wasn't there and I drag between them. Okay, so I'll drag between the top right and the center left. Now you see it's immediately taken those eight hours and reduced it down to one hour. That's reduced it down to seven minutes. And if you look at the bottom, I'll drag between those two. That's enough. And there in the bottom center, we can see that vehicle arriving. All I do is I right click and I say play from here. And there you can see the vehicle arriving. And once, once I'm there, I can now navigate around using my normal navigation tools. So that's pretty much our, our smart search. Um, obviously, once you've found the, vehicle, the item you want, you can bookmark it, you can export it, you can do whatever you want with that. Please feel free to ask questions on that. Um, I'm trying not to go too fast or too slow because we've only got a certain amount of time and I don't want to bore you at the same time. Right, the next thing I'm going to show you is motion search. So motion search is used to identify motion in a specific area. It uses metadata from continuous motion, motion analysis of the cameras. So we run an algorithm on the cameras continuously and we store the metadata associated with the motion. So one may ask, well, doesn't that use processing power? Well, yes, it does but um, we use a low resolution second stream on the video if the cameras have that available, which means that it uses only minimal resources. So when do you use motion search? Well, if you're not sure when an event occurred, uh, only sort of in the area of where, where it occurred, then motion search is, 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 is the tool to use. So once again, let's just run straight into a video so what I want to do here is in the, the reception area here, uh, I know there was a box that was put on the counter sometime on 
Saturday or uh, Monday last week. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to Monday and I go in, into my motion search and I choose an area. And I say, I know the box was put there at some point. Now I click the arrow and it scrolls through all the motion in that area. So I'm just click continuously clicking on that red arrow, well, the, the white arrow in the red background, until such time as I see the box arriving. And there it is. So that was going back six days and finding that item within about 10 seconds using motion search. I'm going to do a, another video just to give you an example. So I was told that on Saturday morning, sometime, a, a white panel van arrived at this particular point. So I'm going to go back to Saturday at seven o'clock in the morning. And I'm going to do a motion search in this area. And then I'm going to scroll through all the motion that was in that area. And you'll see that occurring. There's people, there's vehicles. Bearing in mind, guys, I'm connecting remotely from my house here. And there it is. That's the panel van that I was looking for. And once again, I can now scroll through using my normal navigation tools. I can drag my timeline. I can change the time. I can choose a particular area. I can export it. I can bookmark it. I can do whatever I want with that. So that is the motion search. Right, I'm now going to show you something that is fairly unique to Cathexis. Um, and this is what we call activity trails. So the activity trails gives you an immediate review of prior motion with absolutely no setup required. Okay, it shows demarc demarcated areas where the last motion was in that camera view. And it also uses the metadata, the same metadata that we use for our motion um, search algorithm. So the advantage of this is it allows you immediate review of prior motion. So to give you an example, where would you use this? Well, if you've got a perimeter where there's not a lot of activity and suddenly an alert goes off, and the operator just wants to quickly see what was that last motion. He just clicks on the activity trails overlay and it'll show him. So let's just quickly show you a video. So I'm going to go on this camera and click on the motion trails. And then you can see immediately I went and clicked on the activity. So let me just go back. That was a little bit too fast. So what I do is I click on the motion trail, sorry. Sorry guys, clicked on the wrong button there. And if I click on the, the color, so you can see the green one is, is a few seconds back. And it shows me the motion that was in that particular area. So 28 minutes back, there was motion by that door. I click on that, turn the trail off, and there was motion by the door. Now I can turn the activity trails back on. And I can see in the red section, 1 minute 59 seconds back, there was motion over there. So it gives you an immediate overlay. You don't have to configure anything. I'm going to do the same thing on this camera turn the trails on and you can see on the top of the camera, five minutes back, there was activity there. So I double click on that. And there you can see there was a vehicle that moved in that particular area. So I'm just going to run through, I'm clicking on that green area, 26 minutes back, there was motion there. And if I look on the bottom left, 38 minutes back, there was motion in that area. Okay, so that is the activity trail. So just to summarize where we are so far, we've, I've shown you how the review works. I've shown you the snap search. I've shown you the motion search. And I've shown you the activity trails. 
So what I'm going to do now is go into our meta database search. So the meta database allows you to find transactions and video that's associated with the particular transaction. So hey, what is a transaction? A transaction could be information from an access control system, from a fire system, from an intruder alarm system, from a fence alarm. It could be um, object classification data, anything that's got data and video associated with it. it. Does not require any additional processing power. And it allows you to find specific events and generate reports and export those events. So firstly, I'm gonna show you the user interface. So this is our meta database user interface. And you'll see on the left-hand side, you've got a transaction list. This just happens to be an access control list. And the fields within this list depend on the type of integration that you've done. So if it was a fire panel, you might have zones. If it's an access control, you'll have doors and people. If it's um, a fence system, you might have, you'll probably have zones and uh, alerts. And of course, if it's a face recognition system, you'll have people who have faces that have been identified. You've got your video that's associated with the specific transaction. Then on the right hand side, you've got the transaction detail that's contained within the metadata. Then you've got what we call our easy search. Then we've got our smart filter, which allows you to do a layered multi tiered approach uh, search. We've got uh, the ability to export a selection and then we can generate a report. So reports can get emailed, reports of the transactions can get emailed uh, to select recipients or you can generate CSV or PDF reports from it. We've got what we call our lead in and lead out time settings. Now this allows you to change the, for each transaction you can say, when I click on that transaction, I wanna play three seconds before the transaction and four seconds after the transaction. That's the lead in and lead out times. Then you've got your options for playing back the transaction. You can either play back the transaction once and stop. You can loop the transaction. So play it to the end and then loop back to the beginning. Or you can play the transaction sequentially. So if you want to follow somebody through a building using access control, you can play back sequentially. Then we've got this little target here. So while you're navigating through the video footage, if you push the target, it'll automatically go to when the transaction actually occurred and then your standard navigation. Right, so without further ado, I'm gonna take you into a video. So this is an access control transaction. Um, there's my transaction data on the right, navigation at the bottom. So if I double, double click on a transaction, it's gonna come up with a video footage associated with the transaction. Now I can play it back. I can pause it. I can zoom in and out using digital zoom. And then I can use my normal navigation. I can play at double speed. And I can jump back 10 seconds like I showed you in the normal navigation. Oh, then I can use my timeline as well. I can choose a select an area and I can go to an archive or an export. And you will notice here that not only does it export the, vi the video from the camera, it exports the metadata as well. Looking at a different camera. So that was a single camera associated. What I'm gonna show you now is that you can associate multiple cameras with a transaction. So if you look, there's some people walking in on this camera and then you can choose which camera you want to look at. And these cameras are all associated with this particular transaction. So you'll see they walk out of that camera view. And that's the actual transaction occurring at the door.
All right, so now if I go to archive or export this transaction, you'll notice that it'll, it'll choose all those four cameras plus the metadata associated with those cameras. So you can archive that and play that back at any time. So what I'm going to show you now is a different camera. And what we've done now is we've associated an action with this transaction. So we've said, when this transaction occurs, I want to zoom the PTZ camera into this particular area. You'll also notice that within the view, we've got an overlay of the person uh, uh, in, the, in the data, in the camera view, as well as the metadata on the right-hand side. Okay, so that's the, the basic interface. And now I'm gonna show you some of the search features. Right, so I'm gonna go into my easy search. And you'll see there's a whole lot of drop downs in, in the easy search. So I can go and look, for instance, for a particular door and click on it. I can look for a particular person. Looking for Marco. But I'm going to show you our smart filters. So this allows you to enter multiple parameters for, for searching. So you've got time. You've got event description, terminal name, zone name. And again, this depends on the type of integration. This is access control. So on the time, I can choose some preset settings. So I've got last year, year to date, last quarter, quarter to date, etc. I can choose a specific time from and to. I can look at the previous day, previous hours, previous weeks. Or I can choose a specific period. So what I'm going to do is just choose week to date. And then I'll look for a username. And with users, you can choose one person or you can choose multiple people. So I can say, if the user is one of the following people, then go and do that search. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to choose one specific person. And notice there's a drop down of people that is learned by the system automatically. All right, so I found Neville in the week to date. And what I've decided to do, I'm going to look for Neville Shield. I want a lead in time of three seconds and a lead out time of three seconds, as I described earlier. I want to play at double speed. And I want to play the transactions sequentially. So I click on the se sequential button. And what it's going to do now is it's going to follow Neville through all his transactions. If I, so there you'll see Neville going into the storeroom. And immediately after three seconds, we'll go to the next one because of the lead out time that I've chosen. And now it'll jump to the next transaction. Right, so that's pretty much the, the access control meta database. Uh, and I showed you how easy it was to do the easy search and then the smart filters. So the smart filters allow you to add layered search parameters to go and find that video footage and play it back. So I'm going to do the same thing now, but with the license plate recognition database. Um, once again, I'm going to show you a video. So on the left-hand side, you'll see all the license plate transactions on the right-hand side, the metadata, and in the center is the camera. So I'm just playing back a particular transaction. There you can see the license plate that's been detected for that particular vehicle. Now, once again, I can navigate backwards and forwards.
and I can go and do an easy search. So I'm going to go and look for all vehicles in a particular group. So I'm just choosing one of the blacklist groups that have been created. And those are all the vehicles in the blacklist group. group. I click on it, I play it back. And now you can see an overlay of parameters associated with that transaction. So with access control, we allow you to enter snapshots and images of the person of the vehicle and data regarding his vehicle, etc. There's another transaction from a different camera. So you can see it's across multiple cameras as well. And you can see Craig NR37480 arrived. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to find a, a vehicle and I'm going to add those parameters to that vehicle. So I click on that and I'll say edit license plate information. And I can go and add that person to a group. I can enter in a driver name, a vehicle type, etc. I can add a reference image. And this all assists us to do a search for this particular vehicle later if you want to go and find all the transaction for Joe blogs or something like that. So this is a known individual in the system. You can now attach that to a group and you can create as many groups as you like. It could be a blacklist group, a whitelist group, a staff group. And then you can take an action. You might want to say, if it's a staff group, I want to open a barrier. If it's a blacklist list group, I want to send an email to someone or send an alarm. So I'm going to go to a different site now. Once again, I'm connecting remotely. So this is a different site. And you can see a different camera on a different site showing you the, the license plate. What I'm going to do here is I want to go and find a, a vehicle and then go and search for a specific license plate. So I just want to zoom in on this vehicle here. Let's see what that license plate is. So that's if V. 72 DG. Right, now I can go and do a search for that vehicle. So I'm choosing to go and search for the license plate and I want to search, do a partial search. I can only remember 72 DG. So let's search for all vehicles with the number 72 DG. And then you can see the vehicle coming in. That's the next transaction. So guys, there's a lot of features within this ANPR, but let's not forget that this webinar is really about searching and finding transactions. So again, I can go and add another layer to this filter and say, okay, well, I found all the, all the items for 72 DG, but now I want to go and look for a specific time. So let's look today. Today, there were no transactions. Let's go and look yesterday. And you can see that yesterday there were only two transactions and that's this vehicle obviously arriving in the car park. And that's the next transaction. And once again, I can go and select footage, archive, it'll archive the cameras and the metadata, the license plate, and all the information that comes with that particular license plate. Right, so that is the license plate recognition. I'm only going to show you a, a few metadata based uh, searches because the search methodology is the same throughout. All that's different is the fields that you can select. As I mentioned before, if it's fire panels, you'll have zones. If it's license plates, you'll have license plates and names. Uh, if it's access control, you'll have doors, etc. What I'm going to show you now is our object classification search. Now, object classification allows you to find specific objects on one or multiple cameras. It does use additional processing power because we are using deep learning here. Um, using a neural network. So it's continuously assessing the video and identifying objects. 
So it identifies whether they're people, whether they're animals, whether they're cars, whether they're backpacks, uh, or whatever it might be. Um, we use the same metadata base to do the search. So I'm going to show you a video of the object classification. So I'm going to go straight into a search. On the left-hand side, you'll see obviously all the transactions. So I'm going to go and look for a particular item. So right, I'm going to look for all motorcycles in the cameras on the site. So I click on motorcycles. And I'm going to say, what time should I choose? I think I'll choose the quarter to date. And then I'm going to say, I only want to identify them if the confidence level of the deep learning algorithm is greater than 60%. And I apply that. And then all the transactions with motorcycles will be on the left-hand side. I'll just choose a few just to make sure that it is in fact identifying motorcycles. And you can see it played back some pre-events. There's another one. Okay, let's now choose a different thing to search for. So I noticed earlier some people with umbrellas. So I'm going to search for umbrellas. Let's have a look. And there it's found umbrellas. So again, it's using a deep learning algorithm, using neural networks to go and find all these objects. Right, let's go and look for trucks. Go and find trucks. Now it should find trucks. Let's have a look. And you can see a whole list of trucks. This is for the quarter to date. So there's a lot of transactions. And there's another truck. So I'll do one more. Somebody said, there's some suspect looking people wearing backpacks. So let's go and look for backpacks. And there are people with backpacks. So I'm just clicking through the transactions here. Okay, so using our filters and our search criteria, you can drill down into time, you can drill down into objects, you can look at confidence levels, you can even choose colors um, to find specific objects within the camera view. Uh, and across multiple cameras on site. So if you've got the deep learning switched on for all the for the cameras, then it'll go and find those objects uh, with the parameters that you've set. All right, so hopefully we, uh, we, uh, we, we're getting a feel for all the different ways to find items, to find video footage, to find transactions within our software. And now I'm going to show you our alarm management gateway. So the alarm management gateway is like a PSIM product. So it, it receives transactions from multiple sources. Okay, so the transactions could come from fire panels, alarm panels, they can come from multiple sites in multiple countries, in multiple continents, uh, all back to a central control room. Um, and it logs all the information and keeps a full audit trail of all these transactions that occur. The system will automatically connect to the site from where the event came. And again, it requires no additional processing. So firstly, I'm going to run you through how the alarm gateway works. And Again, let me do a quick uh, video. So if you look, we've got incoming alarms and we've got a history of alarms at the bottom. If I double click on an alarm, you can see that alarm says ANPR blacklist and it came from Cathexis Africa Centurion. It automatically connects to the site, shows live cameras that you've selected and shows 
video associated associated with that particular alarm so it says that guy was a blacklist i can now go and archive that locally so in other words archive it to the control room that archive can be set up to happen automatically as well and i can add a comment so there's a whole host of comments these can be tailored for your particular site Or I can enter a custom comment. So let's say uh, suspicious activity. And there's also a lot of quick close alarm and the system learns the most common buttons that you press and will present those to you on the screen. Then I can close the alarm. You'll see it comes up with some procedures for the operator to follow. And those procedures are associated with a specific alarm. There you can see some technical alarms. Here's another one from a site. It says there's been an intercom that's been pressed. And it goes and fetches the footage. I'm going to say, well, that's a visitor or a contractor. So I'll just run through a few just to give it. This is from a different site, different alarm. I'm going to say that's a it looks like it's a staff or a visitor. And there you can see that the procedure is completely different for that particular alarm. One last loitering at reception. It brings up the reception camera and it shows you what caused the alarm. Those people have been hanging around there. So you obviously set up a motion, an analytics on the sites saying that if there's loitering there, I want to send an alarm to the alarm gateway. And this is now the alarm gateway receiving the alarms. And I can now go and enter the comments or store that video, etc. I'll set that security staff and close that alarm. All right, so that's the alarm gateway, the basic functionality. Um, you can also have presets. So instead of having to connect to the alarm, You've got a quick little bit of uh, thumbnails to show you the video. So you can see immediately if it's a dog and then just close the alarm. Or you can go and look at the history of all the alarms that have occurred. And in this particular panel, you can choose cases, which are like police dockets, or you can go and do a filter. And this is the search on how you find specific alarms. So I can say if the preset comments is intruder, I'm going to add that. And in the previous three months, go to apply that and it filters that history. And I can go and now find all those transactions where the comment has been intruder in the previous three months. So I'm just going to play around with a few other settings here. So I'm now looking for any transactions that where they've had suspicious activity. And there are some, you can see there are some recordings. So I'll double click on that. Now it comes up with all the information on that particular alarm, what site it came from, when the event happened, when it occurred, what comments were entered, any recordings that are associated with that particular suspicious activity. And you can see I can turn the overlays on and off as well. And using my normal navigation panels, I can uh, navigate backwards and forwards. I can also open a case. So opening a case here is like opening a police docket. And then I can say, I want to escalate this case to my supervisor because I'm not too sure what to do with it. And I can escalate this case, enter in comments, And now you can see a little icon on that screen that says there's a case being opened. And I can look at all the cases that have been opened. So if I look at this particular case, 
person detected in the back parking. You can see all the alarms associated with that case. So you can have multiple alarms with a single case. I can look at any video associated with that case. So this is really like an incident manage management system or a PSIM. And then you can see a full timeline of what happened with that particular case. So it's like a police docket. So now I'm just going to quickly show you how to look for a particular comment. So I've said if the comment group is actual alarms, only show the actual alarms rather than showing nuisance alarms or false alarms. And once again, I can go and double click on a particular transaction and find that alarm from the history, play the video footage back. Right, guys, so I think, I hope I haven't been overloading you with information, but I, I do feel that without showing you all the detail, it's very difficult to portray the depth to which our search features go. Um, so to give you a summary, what did we look at today? We looked at our video re review interface, how to navigate back and forth, how to archive, how to archive multiple cameras, how to bookmark, how to retrieve bookmarks. We showed you the snap search, which allows you to drill down into footage very quickly, regardless of how busy the scene is. We showed you our motion search, which allows you to choose a specific area and go and find activity in that area. We showed you the activity trails, which allows somebody to click on an overlay and see immediately what the prior motion was in that area. We showed you our object classification search which uses neural networks and deep learning to identify specific objects. And then we showed you our meta database uh, where we've got access control, uh, ANPR, fire panels, and other integrations that we can do. And finally, our alarm gateway, which is our head end control room environment where people are monitoring multiple sites. So now I'm going to go into our question and answer session. And don't forget, guys, this is all there to try and help you improve the effectiveness and efficiency and ultimately the return on your investment. So Daryl and Dean, if you can turn your audio and your video on and, um, and let's go into look through all the questions that have been asked and, and maybe answer some, some of the questions. All right, so I'll take the first one. Manford asked the questions, well, what cameras did we use? Um, so the site that Gus used within uh, within the views that you guys saw was our Centurion branch in South Africa. We've got various different kinds of cameras there, and it's, it's good to note that uh, Cathexis is a video management software has got direct integration drivers into various different commonly used camera sets out there. So at, at our Centurion branch, we've got a combination of Bosch and Axis and um, some of the Chinese band products as well. So uh, from a camera perspective, as an open platform, it allows you and your customers to really utilize various different camera sets within a site. So um, good quality video will allow you to be able to um, utilize our search tools that you've been um, looking at today more effective and efficiently. Okay, I will answer the next one from Edwin. Um, yes, the recordings will be available online. And after the webinar, you will get a, a link to the recording that you can download or review at any time. Henrik Ford asked a very interesting question. So he just asked, does everything that you've shown us, um, is that in one module or is it in different modules? Uh, do we need to install it in a server or is it in a client as well? So um, let me just handle the server client question first. A client 
all that the client would do is a client would connect to a site where there's maybe one or multiple server applications running in the background. And those server applications would be where all these different feature sets would have either been configured or they are available. So in your client interfaces, everything that Gus has shown you, the meta databases, the advanced search tools, all of those things are available through your client interface. Um, and obviously the configuration that was done on the site will be made available through your client interface. When it comes to where these different modules are available, so all of the standard search tools like Snap Search, uh, Motion Search, um, the um, Motion Trials feature set. So those search tools are all standard feature sets within Capexis. As soon as you start moving into the, um, the optic classification, that is that, that artificial intelligent um, algorithm is a part of our advanced analytics suite. So those are licenses that are charged additional to your standard base package that you have. Um, so there, there are additional costs there, but you know it, it depends on what you would like to achieve. And then lastly, there was the alarm management gateway, which is our event. Um, handling tool, which Gus showed right at the end towards the webinar. And those things are licensed per seat um, or per station separately as well. So we reach out to us um, and we can assist you with um, building and designing a solution um, that can clearly define for you which, um, which modules are, are freely available as part of the base package and which are add-ons. Um, and we also have online design tools that can assist you from a licensing perspective to understand what is additional requirements and what's not. Okay, I'll pick up from uh, Tyrone, uh, was asking if we interface with Vision Line. Vision Line, I'm assuming you're referring to the ASA Abloy um, uh, access control and their management system. No, presently we don't interface with that. If you do have projects available, um, you can uh, just drop me an email and we can pick it up from there. Um, and obviously we would need to get API and obvious and hardware for doing the development, but let's first have a look at the opportunities and I'm sure we can um, address them for you. Yeah, guys, if you go to our website, um, you can click on the integrations tab. It shows you all the integrations we've done. Uh, we are continuously integrating products. It's one of our major differentiating uh, factors. Um, and obviously, if there's a business case, we'll do that integration. Right, were there any more questions, guys? So Gilbert asked uh, the ANPR cameras if there's any specific uh, ones. Daryl, maybe you can pick it up. Um, yes, we have integrated the, the HIC, uh, Daiwa, and MileSight, and as well as the Axis with their um, embedded uh, um, solution on that. Um, but yes, those are the ones we've done. We also have our own embedded um, ANPR engine within our software as well, um, which will require separate licensing. But yeah, the NPR cameras, as Gus has mentioned, on our website, if you go to um, into, uh, cameras and look for specifically ANPR cameras, that list should come up. Or if you look for LPR, ANPR or LPR solutions on our website, it should also there list the cameras that we have done. And I see you guys have answered some questions in the, in the chat as well. So that's great. Yes, as we've been going on. Okay. Right. So I think guys, if, if there aren't any more questions, please feel free to, to email, uh, email us. You can send in uh, questions to info at cat.coza uh, or contact one of your regional officers for any questions, specific questions that you might have. Um, but we're always available um, to answer your questions. If the questions are super technical uh, on a site that you do have, so you can send a mail to support at cat.coza. And for any other information, there is a lot of information on our website. There's about 65 tutorial videos that you can look at, as well as a lot of manuals and, and other data that you require. So, so hopefully that this today has been informative and I haven't bored you to death with my, my monotonous voice. Uh, and I haven't gone into too much detail for some people or too little detail for others. So once again, um, thanks guys. And I think, uh, I think we'll, we'll, Cut it here unless anyone's got any pressing issues.
Yeah, there's one last uh, there's one last question, Gus, just from Grant. Yeah. So he's um, yeah, so he's asking whether there's a possibility to integrate the AMPR database or AMPR reads into um, the SAPS, which is a South African police service. Uh, does anyone else think to assist them? As it is about to become a requirement at one of our sites. So when it comes to the automatic number plate reads that we do, irrelevant of the four different embedded cameras that we already support, as well as our live um, our, our on server or within our software application database. So however we do the NPR reads, um, the, the key thing is that we've got an API, um, which is an application protocol interface that allows external systems to receive NPR reads from us as, as the VMS. Various different applications um, who offer um, different interfaces from combined uh, regional databases like um, in South Africa, Sniper or Online Intelligence, uh, Verify is another one. They've all integrated our, our VMS API. So that will allow you not just to integrate or have, a, have some kind of um, pay for use integration into the SAPS, but various other databases and data sources as well. So it's services that these um, entities would offer you as, a, as an addition to what we already offer you from a REEDS perspective. So reach out to us, we can definitely help you um, just uh, make contact with some of these organizations. If not, and you've got a different application or interface that you want to use to receive those reads, reach out to us and we can assist you with that as well. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. I'm just going to pick one up from Gilbert, who's had some issues with uh, Dawa cameras, um, obviously the ANPR. Please just uh, check that um, if going to the onto our website, um, see that the particular camera that you're referring to is integrated and also check the firmware version. Um, we do notice that with updates on cameras, they've changed firmware and there might be an incompatibility issue. If you don't, uh, if they don't match and you need further support, please drop an email to support at cat.co.za um, and our support teams will be able to assist you. Um, they could log into the site if you give them access and just assist to check that the setup is correct. We also have a uh, question from an anonymous attendee regarding uh, organized analytics setup and demonstration webinars. Um, there are a lot of tutorials online, as Gus has mentioned, um, which should be able to assist you in very specific um, setups. But certainly further down the line, if we have um, a need for that, and it is in our plans to, to start adding to uh, setup um, and configuration uh, tutorials on feature sets, um, it will be in the future if it's not already, if there's not a tutorial video already available um, on our website. So please visit those and see if they can assist you. If not, please just drop us an email and we can see what we can do for you. Okay, guys. Well, I think that's great. Daryl and uh, Dean, thanks very much for your assistance. I appreciate it. And thank you all for attending. It's, uh, it's been a great, uh, a lot of people attended. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, we do appreciate it, for taking your time out of your day to come to this webinar and also your feedback in the poll that we had earlier. So with that, well, I think I'll end the webinar. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thank thanks you very much. Bye. Bye. Cheers.